and I'm back with Councillor Moffat and he a few comments coming through, Councillor. Mm. <laughs> Let's sample a few, then we'll get to what he prepared for us. And on my SMS line, that is 20933, that is 20933, you can drop there your comment or question if you have any at Hop FM Live on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. That's our handle. Ensure you follow us and like our page and WhatsApp line is 0717400555. On Twitter, I can see Jackie S.E. Pillar seeing such a timely message people should listen to this managing post election anxiety this is a very important discussion and i agree to that uh thank you for keeping it right here i also see one on my whatsapp page uh nancy kasatwa in kesarian market says hello hope i choose to embrace the futilities of life after all these politi politicians are seeking jobs to earn and do their own things we give the votes but many kenyans know that the benefits are not theirs. Mm, something there uh, Nancy has said. Uh, let me check on my Facebook page. That is a Top FM Live. We are live there. You, uh, Robert Asante, Sana Robert Manzia, you're saying you're tuned in from Village Market. Unasema uh, tuko pamoja. Asante Sana for tuning in. I can see you, Charles Luaga. You're saying you're tuned in from Nyamira. Thank you. Uh, Mary Mumu, you're loving the discussion. You're tuned in from Thika. Thank you so much. Kitu is tuned in courtesy of Ngumbi. Uh, you're learning a lot. Asante Grace Mutunga, you're tuned in. Gilbert, I also see right there. Uh, Lillian Omamo, you're saying we need this for sure. Yes, I agree. All of us need that. I think a Aileen Courage is still thinking about that statement, how we defined anxiety. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's, let's help her understand that. She, she didn't get that well. Uh, she's writing a normal situation. How now? <laughs> please, please, let's Thank describe you. it again and break it down for her. Yeah, yeah I think this is just a, a simple uh, uh, description of what anxiety is. And first of all, we said it, it's a normal feeling. It's a normal feeling. But then there, there, there are some situations that can elicit uh, these feelings. And that is why we said it is a normal reaction to an abnormal situation. Abnormal in the sense that, in this context, uh, that uh, if it was, uh, if people are being asked, uh, they, they would just had hand pick their leader and uh, they, they have them declared as, 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 the, as the president. But uh, that is not happening and they have to be put through a process and uh, and uh, this process to some people feels very abnormal and uh, people need to know that it is actually okay to to mm. feel the way they are feeling but then the, the 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 big question is how do you or what do you do with the feelings that you are having mm. and i think that is now where we are uh, just about to go mm. yeah so um managing anxiety yes this is this is this is very critical because um, as we have said that this is a normal feeling uh, if something is normal then you need not to fight it yes you've seen people who even fight or resist or restrain others from grieving mm. I, I have found it happening yeah. Imagine Sad. even even some children, uh, some parents, uh, uh -huh. very unfortunate, mm. uh, telling their children that they need not to grieve. Uh, you know, uh, the other day there was a clip, uh, you know, going round on social media of this girl who lost, I think, was a mother. She is in school and yes. she comes home and she is sobbing and crying on the grave. You know, people did not inform her that mm. the mother had died for simple reasons, I would say, that she's about to sit for an exam. And I keep telling people, <laughs> you can repeat an exam. Yes. Even if it was happening tomorrow, mm. you can repeat it, but you cannot reverse the process of grief. I mean, there is something that is likely to impair somebody, you know, throughout their lives. Mm. So, and that is why we say that if, if children are big enough to love, they are big enough to grieve. You know? So, but then, you realize there are some people who, uh, who want to stop others uh, from saying how they are feeling. Now, I want to say this. In your safe spaces, what I would call your safe space, 
outside there. Remember we talked about, uh, uh, you know, looking, uh, uh, having friends who are not overly opinionated. Yes. You know, as, as you try to deal with uh, <laughs> this uh, whole question of uh, uh, election. Now we are saying it is important for us to prepare mentally for delayed results. You know? Delayed results. <laughs> yes, it is important. Mm -hmm. And this is something that has been proven ac ac across the world. Now, like what we were saying, we are saying that expecting an answer, you do not have extends uncertainty. You don't have an answer, but then you are so much focused on that. You cannot leave the house. You keep from hopping from one TV station to another. And uh, when you are seeing that your candidate is, uh, is, uh, is on top, on, on, you know, on, from a particular TV station, you feel soothed. You feel massaged, you know. Uh, but then uh, when you go back to another, you, 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 you start re-experiencing that same pain. Mm. You know, yes. so what we are saying, and I have seen people, <laughs> I have seen people <laughs> saying all manner of things yes. about particular TV stations, you know, because they are not uh, up to speed uh, with what you want. Now, this is what we said when we are talking about that frustration circle mm. that uh, you cannot afford to expect an answer. You don't have uh, that you don't have solution, or rather, you don't have a solution to a particular issue, and then you continue dwelling there. It uh, continues to extend anxiety and uncertainty. You can just imagine uh, the scripture that we started with, Exodus chapter 14. Yes, if God allowed the children of Israel to linger, you know, by the side of uh, red, the, the Red Sea, what could have you, happened? You can even to Moses, because they were like, hey, we told you, mm. you, you, you get to watch a two, to kai kule misri. To kule cucumber. To kule cucumber <laughs> and all that. <laughs> but then I think uh, God hurried that process and he came in qu quickly and told Moses what to do and uh, to make a way uh, in the sea. Now we are saying in order for you to overcome this feeling of anxiety it is good for us to prepare mentally for delayed results like 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 what is happening yes now the other thing is that while we wait for that we need to plan how we spend time while waiting for these results what are you doing with your time you are in the house or even in your business and uh, you are not even concentrating on what is happening there because you are so much glued on your TV, we need to have some proper time management because if we do not pro uh, uh, plan ourselves, then you realize that you are going to have a lot of, uh, you know, this sense of uncertainty, anxiety, and you are not able to do much. The other thing we are saying is that we need to avoid dwelling on the worst case scenarios. Mm. You know? Break it down for us, especially worst, that one. Yes, worst case scenario. This is where we dwell so much on things that we cannot control, like we have said. Worst case scenario. Then, and you know what happens? This elicits uh, some other negative emotions. Now, in order for us to overcome this, it is important for us maybe to meditate, maybe on the word of God, or something else that is not related to, to actually what is ha happening, um, then at the same time, we could take what I call mental vacation. Mm. You know? You could engage in a more different discussion uh, that is uh, going to get you away out of this Surrou by surrounding yourself by positivity and by surrounding yourself with the people who are not consumed by these stories about election. Mm -hmm. You know? And every time they just want to discuss what is happening. And this is, this is where we said that sometimes it is good for us to avoid overly opinionated people. Mm -hmm. You know? You know there are so guard your space. Yes. Who is around you and what's the discussion? Happening? Absolutely. Guarding your space. Run for the hills. You know, I, I found this somewhere and it is quite interesting. Run for the hills 
uh, this uh, things like movies, hike, switch off the TV, get out of the house. Mm. Do something <laughs> else. We need people on the road. Yes. We need businesses people. open. We need to, I I want to I hope that I'm going to see uh, traffic on thicker road on my way back. <laughs> you know, people need to yes. go back to their work. Mm -hmm. And by it is important even for us to control our media consumption. Uh -huh. You know, taking a break from news or social media if you find it's causing you stress. Uh, there's something, uh, there's a word here very interesting. Avoid doom scrolling. What's that? Doom scrolling, you, you are just on your phone or on your gadget uh, to look or searching for things that are spelling doom. Okay? You are so much uh, uh, obsessed with hearing what people are saying about a particular candidate. And therefore, it gives you adrenaline, you know, throughout the day. Get off the greed, you know, getting away from what we call uh, strongly opinionated friends who can make you elicit these negative feelings. Now, don't let election take you away from the basics. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. Basics. Exercise, yeah. eating. Mm. There are some people who, who cannot even eat. You know, they, they have lost their appetite. Hey, that's serious. You know, because of the <laughs> gas that is coming out and uh, every minute you are experiencing adrenaline cutting across your tummy, you cannot eat. It takes away your appetite. Uh, some people are, are not even able to pray, you know, because of uh, these anxieties. So we are saying, stop allowing this process to take you away from your basics. Yes. You know, if you are used to going out for exercises, it is don't let this thing interrupt with that schedule. You know, do it because it is important for you. And uh, 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 the other thing is like what we said, looking for signs of hope. Is there anything that can give you hope? You know, we can find a lot of hope in the word of God, even during, uh, uh, you know, such a moment like this. You know, we can find a lot of hope um, from other people, you know, who are uh, objective. But then when you look at, uh, when you focus and when you anchor your faith and your hope on TV stations, I can tell you for a fact you've, you'll be riding on a very stubborn horse. Mm. You know, because I don't know, but we need to be very careful because uh, we need not to really get ourselves glued there. You know, continue with what you are doing. Because when the IEBC stands to give the final tallies, they will still find you wherever you will be. Yeah. Even if you are not actively on that TV, mm. you will still catch up with the news. You know? But then, you know, sometimes there is this adolescent feeling <laughs> of, of wanting to be the first people yeah. mm. to come out with the, the breaking one, news. The hot, juicy news. Yes. <laughs> yes. And that is, that is the reason why uh, <laughs> some of us are actually hurting. Mm. Because you are there, you, you, you want to be the first one to, you know, to, to break the news. To tweet. To tweet. Mm. And, and for that reason, you realize that uh, it is going to do you more harm than good. Yes. Let us wait for the IABC to break the news for us. You, you, you cannot, you, 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 you cannot, um, you cannot exceed them, you know, in the speed of doing that. So, and that is what I'm actually calling doom scrolling. Uh, because as you scroll down your gadgets, you are likely to experience <laughs> all manner of these uh, yes. things. Mm. Now, we talked about uh, uh, looking for signs of hope. Then, talking to friends, support system. Mm -hmm. But then it is important for us to set boundaries. Yes. Not just for ourselves. Even for others, being mindful of other people's boundaries. Ah, it's mutual. It is mutual. Mm. It is going to benefit you the same way it benefits them. Because, you know, Grace, there's something I call emotional illiteracy. Mm. 
Yes. And emotional illiteracy is our inability to feel the emotions of others and therefore we, we behave in a manner to suggest that we are the only people who are occupying this particular space. Mm. And I can tell you for a fact, if you do not know how to read the emotions of others, it goes without saying that you also do not understand your own emotions. Ah. And, and, and therefore, emotional illiteracy is likely to catch up with you. And we need to understand that there are some people who are not able to express how they are feeling, even when they are quiet. You know, I know many people are quiet. They don't want to say a thing, you know, not because they are okay. Yes. But sometimes they find it hard to express how they are feeling. Mm. And you know, this is, uh, though there is a very thin line, it is not the same as holding your peace and, um, you know, like the way the, the, the way the word of God will tell us, do not be anxious for anything, mm. but with the prayer and supplications you make your request be known unto God. You know, as far as God is concerned, peace is not the absence of turbulences. You know, those turbulences are still there. But then there are people who are quiet, not because they are healthy, not because they are whole, but because they actually fear. They do not know how to express how they are feeling. Yes. And that is what psychology we call um, uh, normative alexthemia. You know, mm, that's alex a big word. Alexthemia mm. is a person's inability to, exp to put their feelings into words. Is it the same if uh, you ask, um, okay, so how are you feeling? I can't express it. Absolutely. But then there's, there's one that, uh, you know, borders what I would call pathology <laughs> in, in the sense that people who are not able to express their feelings, and I can tell you, Grace, in as much as we are saying that um, we need to be careful about social media and all that, I want to dare say mm. that there is a way people can positively use social media to vent out how they are feeling in a positive way. Talk about that. Because, uh, like now, you know, Kenyans do not disappoint. I, uh, sometimes I, I go through uh, what people are saying, and, and sometimes you actually laugh. Mm. This is where somebody is even, and it is, th this is actually an antidote. Yes. Uh, to, to anxiety that you can discover the power of humor even in the midst of what you are going through. Ah. That, you, that you can smile, you can, you can actually say something that can make other people laugh, mm -hmm. you know, yes. in a positive way, provided that you are not injuring other people's emotions. Like, for instance, I have seen, um, <laughs> I saw somebody say, hey, that this telling is actually taking longer than relationships. <laughs> you, you know, mm. that such a person has not hurt anyone. No. And th such a person tells you that they are anxious, mm. but in the midst of all that, they are, they, are, they are trying to find humor to ease this tension and anxiety. Mm. So there's a way people are able to, to find humor you know, even in the midst of all this. Yes. So, what we have called uh, uh, normative alexthemia is when somebody is not in a position to put their words, or rather to put their feelings into words. Yeah. And you know, going back to the, going back to the frustration circle, mm. the person who is likely to get to use that door of aggression and fight, in most cases, are people who are not able to put their feelings into words. In other words, they are suffering from what we've called alexthemia. They, they, they cannot express it. Yeah. And you know, the only way they express it is by, by acting out. Oh. Let me bring it closer. Yes. We have, we have heard, we have read in the news somebody taking a knife, a panga, and uh, eliminating his or her entire family. Mm. You know what such a person is saying? I, I keep telling people, that man 
is communicating. It's only that he doesn't know how to put his feelings mm. into words. But they have said something by they doing have, that they action. They have said something. Mm. You know? We have, I have seen people who get depressed. Mm. Like in another s sad, uh, you know, thing I was following um, of this lady who was so depressed, you know, because of what is happening in her family, you know, the husband has abandoned her with, with small children. She doesn't know how to raise them. And slowly by slowly, she begins to slip into depression. And then what happens? The unthinkable. Uh, went and uh, threw the children into a well of water. And, you know, it was such a sad thing to watch. Mm. But then, unfortunately, our society, maybe because of lack of information, they do not know how to handle such a person. They become outcasts in our society. They even go to jail because, unfortunately, even <laughs> sometimes our justice system, sometimes you realize uh, there is also something that needs to be done, you know, to look at some of these issues. And, uh, and um, this is a person who is so sick, they are not able to express uh, their feelings into words, and they are so much looking for comfort, looking for peace. By the way, Grace, did you know people do not commit suicide because they want to die? Mm -mm. As a matter of fact, if you talk to a person who is at the verge of committing suicide and you try to bring them back into rational thinking, they will tell you that one of the things they fear is death. Mm. But then we say that somebody commits suicide because they are feeling overwhelmed by pain and they only eliminate this pain is by taking themselves away to another place where this pain is not able to catch up with them. So in other words, we are saying they die because they are trying to run away from pain, not necessarily because they want to die. Yeah. So these people need a lot of help. They need to be assisted. So the same thing we are saying here, that it is important for us to express our feelings. It is important for us to say how we are feeling. In, in, the other day I was talking to parents about our young people use social media to grieve. Oh. And, and, and actually, there's, to some extent, there's a way it helps. I, I recorded that on my YouTube channel. Mm. Um, in that They have their parents in their presence, but they absolutely. just can't. You know they why? prefer to go online. Yes, they prefer to go online. And this is the reason, because on social media, with their peers, they are able to get a real-time response to mm. their crisis. Mm. You know, they the are comments to, and the likes the comments and the, and the like mm. and all that. They are able to get that, you know, instant feedback. They are able to get that attention. I have counseled with young people who, who have told me how their peers are really trying to help them to overcome whatever issue they are going through. So sometimes, uh, and and I have put it in a very positive way. Yeah. Uh, 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 sometimes, uh, and especially to our young people, teenagers, yes. they express themselves by writing. And, and so much so on social media. Look at them when they are commemorating their loved ones, uh, whatever, uh, uh, what we call it. The bad days. Or when somebody dies. Memorial. Uh, memorial, yes. yes. You know? And, and, and they can go there and write, even grown-ups, mm. even adults. We have mm. seen people writing mm -hmm. on social media. Yes. It's been two years mm. since you left. It's been 10 years. And that is why I'm saying it is okay, as mm. a matter of fact. I, yes. I, I'm not here to demonize that. That is actually one way, uh, you know, through which social media can help people mm. to get rid of their feelings and their emotions. And yeah. sometimes I tell parents, would you mind going to their walls mm. and find out what they are writing, uh, you know, so that you can be able to approach them mm. from a point of information I I instead of just doing guesswork as you yes. try to tour their hearts, mm. right? So there's, there's a lot that we can learn. And that is yes. why I'm saying we, we, we cannot demonize the whole aspect of social media because it is okay for people to express how they are feeling. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I, I have seen people, we have, we've talked about humor. I've seen people how they, they, they are writing. Oh, you know, I felt depressed. Uh, quiet a TV station, so nimeruka mm. hapa, and, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm feeling like I'm getting healed. Yes. So it is okay, provided that somebody is not uh, hurting their neighbors, hurting other people. It is okay. But then, most importantly, if you realize that you are getting depressed because of all this and the overwhelming sense of loss, it is important for us to seek help. It is important for you to step out and seek help, seek support, you know, if you feel depressed. Talk to friends, you know, support system. But then, like we have said, it is important for us to set our own boundaries. Yes. You know, mm. even as we respect other people's boundaries. Okay. Yes. Mm, Kenya ni yetu na tunashikana mikono. Uh, this time and every time kuijenga Kenya ju Kenya ni yangu Kenya ni yako the station belongs to us and we are here to stay even at this time you're maintaining peace as we wait and you're saying no to anxiety no to you know stress no to depression because you have a life actually after election you know hiyo kazi yako umefunga itakuwa inakungoja papo hapo you know, it, it will be waiting for you to open it up. You know, your employer will be there just waiting for you to come back and serve. So please uh, maintain peace, no stress, no anxiety. I'm hosting uh, Councillor Moffat Mshauri. He's a psychologist and a family therapist from City and Clay City. And we're talking about how to manage anxiety at this time. We have around um, 15, 16 minutes actually to the top of the hour. But I'd love to hear what uh, our great listeners are saying. Our SMS line is 209. Nine three three. That is that is 20933 you can also get me at hop fm live on facebook on twitter and on instagram and you can get me on my whatsapp line 0717400555 that's where you can drop in your question or your comment allow me to <laughs> joski writes again and says you know councillor moffat when the bible says we should we should not be anxious about anything does it mean we should not be having this feeling i'm having this morning of anxiety is that a sin kindly help me understand <laughs> hey. no it is not sinful i i think from the word go we said that this is a normal feeling that, that God created. But then, you know there is anxiety that can rob you of your objectivity. That's what we are talking about. There are some levels of anxiety that can make you unable to pray, for example. Because you are so anxious. You know, they immobilize you. You, you, you are not able to do that which you do every day. You know, that's the kind of anxiety that, that, that we are talking about. Otherwise, anxiety as we know it, it is not sinful to be anxious. Yes. But then we need to be careful lest anxiety makes us sin. Mm. Yeah. Mm. The same way uh, the, the, the Bible will remind us, do not the sun... Do not let the sun go down. Do not let, let the sun go down yes. in your anger. Mm -hmm. Meaning it is, not a, it is not a sin to be angry. But then the question is, what, what is it that you do with your anger? Mm. You know, there is, you can be angry and not sin. Mm. And you can also be angry and you allow anger to push you into sinning. Mm -hmm. So that's what we are saying. Otherwise, anxiety is okay. Everybody has it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I am. Uh, <laughs> thank you, uh, Victoria, for listening. I see you right there. Sante Sana. Uh, of course, Nancy Asante had seen your nini. Liz, Liz writes and says, whatever the councillor is saying is expressing exactly how most of us are feeling stroke experiencing. I wish you could tell all listeners to tune in. Uh, being blessed in Meru. Thank you, Liz. And for sure, we'll do something. We'll have this conversation on our YouTube page in a short while. Then you can be able to share with uh, all your friends. And then this one, oh, Carol. Uh, you know, we say this, this, this grieving and, and the pain and anxiety affects all, also other areas of our lives. Carol writes and says, Hello, Hope FM. I could not even go and vote due to an, an uncontrollable pain because I'm heartbroken. But the worst thing is the two of us are suffering. Mm. E, e suffering a heartbreak. Mm -hmm. anxiety uh, Absolutely. And if it's not sorted, what can it lead to? 
Absolutely. Heartbreaks. I, I, I don't know what is it that caused her heartbreak. I don't know whether they separated with, with her friend or whatever it is. Heartbreaks can actually uh, immobilize you in that you are not able to do anything. Yeah, be it uh, in, uh, in the context of relationships, it can cause somebody not to do anything. Like now she's saying she was not able to exercise her constitutional duty or right, yeah. uh, civic duty, to go and vote because she was feeling down. But then I'm saying that uh, it, it is okay not to be okay, Caro. Uh, we, we want to, I don't want to, to stigmatize her or to make her feel as if she is abnormal. Uh, we, we begin in counseling, we say it is okay to be not to be okay. That's, yes. that's where we start. Mm. Uh, because there are some people who have been made to feel bad about how they are feeling. Mm. And you know, people are, are, are very good at incriminating uh, your feelings. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have, we have, we have, I have seen it happen, you know, even in the course of uh, uh, counseling where somebody feels bad that you're angry at oh. what maybe they did. Yes. You know, they are not able to uh, see how they cost you. Uh, they are not able to look at the process of this anger, but they are only seeing, they are feeling bad that you are angry. Mm -hmm. So, Carol needs to be, uh, to feel okay and to know that sometimes, uh, maybe it, it was just a matter of coincidence that uh, she she went through this heartbreak when, uh, again, she was supposed to <laughs> to be voting and therefore maybe it overwhelmed her. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can happen like that. But she needs to pick her up her pieces, dust herself, and and stand again. Yes. Uh, so that again she can have what we call activity, objectivity, you know, ability to dream again. Uh, because heartbreaks and anxiety takes away all that mm. yeah okay betty hey betty how are you doing you're seeing what a timely session you have as for me <laughs> regarding this election anxiety i decided not to watch any tv station i switched off my social media except for whatsapp and i bought some movie series to keep me busy i take one hour for prayer every day and that's how i find humor in this mixed anxiety if my candidate wins i praise god mm -hmm. if he he or she loses i support the winning one but hope fm you got me yes we got you yes. keep it hope FM. <laughs> yes indeed we got you that sounds like someone who is really balanced in, yes. in the way she is looking at this whole thing but then i would also want to throw a caution there yes uh, because uh, there are people who run away from pain and i'm not saying that this is mm. uh, what she is doing tell us about that uh, people who insulate themselves against pain now you know you know you are hurting when you uh, when, when when there are some triggers that are eliciting pain mm. like now i would want to ask what does she think would happen to her if she actually, you know, looked at that TV and saw uh, how her preferred candidate is faring? Uh, oh, what kind of, emotion. what kind of emotions and feelings would it bring on her? You know, because if you feel it is still okay, she, you know, she, you know, like the way she's telling us yes. that if if he wins, praise God. If she doesn't or he doesn't, um, I will accept the one who comes in. Mm. That should be the attitude. Yes. Even when you actually uh, look at what is happening mm. uh, on TV, that, that, that you can have a look at it, but then you say, uh, I'm okay with, with mm. whatever happens. Okay. This is somebody who is really trying to overcome this pain but again i would be i would fear if somebody is insulating themselves mm -hmm. against pain you know by by running away i don't want to see it mm. because the moment you see it you feel troubled you feel anxious yes so you know that you have truly overcome when you actually see it and you see your candidate is lagging behind but still it doesn't elicit negative feelings mm. yeah Mm, something there for you to uh, 
you know i almost use that time we say in our village ujipeleleze mm. <laughs> <laughs> like a feeling you get yes. as you watch so that you don't run away from the truth yes. uh musili i uh, thank you so much for writing you're saying i'm a silent listener tuned in and always loving the show thank you maureen is saying uh uh, Gracious Design is tuned in Asante Sana. <laughs> we are Naito uh, Malishi Favored Designs in Kino. And so, good afternoon, Grace and Counselor. Mimi, I've opened my shop as usual. Kino, especially where I am, business is moving on very fast. Oh, yes. What would you want to, to tell uh, uh, this great listener of ours? Yes, first of all, if, if if she is not running away from pain, I want to congratulate her because she has seized the moment, you know, and, and, and she is doing well. So congratulations and, and continue. Whether your candidate wins or he doesn't, life still continues. The, this is the reality. And, and it is important for us to understand that whoever wins is a win for Kenya, you know. When I look at the two candidates and, and the way they are faring, I'm, I'm, I'm saying to myself, truly, these are national leaders. Yeah. You know? Uh, you know, looking at the way it is, you, you look at it and you are like, oh, it's almost 50-50. These, mm -hmm. these are national leaders. Yes. And, and, and they deserve our respect. And therefore, their win is everybody's win. Kenya has won. Yes. And, and, and I think it is important for us to... Uh, to understand that because if we do not embrace that reality then you realize that uh, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is going to, uh, to affect you negatively. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I, I think we, we've got to embrace uh, uh, this culture. Somebody was telling me that hey, you need to uh, let people know that um, embracing the culture of conceding defeat mm -hmm. is very healthy. Yes. Why is it that people want to laugh, want to, you know, laugh at somebody who is conceding defeat and you see so many messages on social media, eh? Fulani wa fulani ameanguka A, B, C, D. So conceding defeat. And I think there is something that we are even teaching our children. Yes. They are observing even how our national leaders are doing. Even how our various uh, media houses are doing, I was telling somebody yes. that the whole society is learning. You know, we are modeling to, we never know the, the kind of people we, uh, we are modeling, you know. So this, the culture of conceding and accepting that this one, I've got to fight another day. And you move on. It's a culture that the general Kenyan society needs to embrace. It is very important. It is healthy. And it makes people live in harmony and in unity. Yes. The other day, I, 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 I actually saw on, um, on social media during the campaign moment. And mm. I, was, I felt so happy about that uh, particular clip of these two uh, 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 caravans. You know these uh, campaign yes. trucks, oppositions, eh? oppositions, mm. and and they are they, this this one is going to that direction, another one is coming to this direction, and the guys there they are greeting one another, yes. and they are they are happy about mm. who they are supporting. Yes. You know this is the culture that we need to embrace. Okay, it's very important. Mm. Yeah. Wow, we have three minutes to go. Can you imagine? So wow. <laughs> I feel you needed some more few hours to go. Um, in conclusion, uh, Councillor Moffat, so we have had all that. I, I think for me what stands out that suffering is a choice. Yeah. If you choose to suffer because mm. of the results, they are yes. delaying. Pain is inevitable. Hey, pain, yeah. oh, pain you must go and you must embrace the futility of life. Yes. So have that enough cushion that you can handle pain. Mm. But if you choose to suffer because mm. of the results that are coming, it's a choice you've made. It's a choice. And you'll face the consequences. Absolutely. What of those who say, ah, you see the juicy bit of this election, lazima wende de ando poa by the time results are coming. What did you say in a minute before well, we conclude? Of course, I would say there are people whose ego are feeling massaged and their emotions <laughs> are feeling massaged. Yes. You know, provided that when you are doing that, you are not hurting another person. I, I also know there is that beauty of, uh, of a contest. 
you know when when somebody is feeling happy that their their winner is uh, or their person is winning and uh, maybe my parting shot would be that we've got to be like the way Kenyans celebrate their athletes ah. we, we, we never think about what tribe they come from we celebrate you know, one time, uh, Grace, I went to Mozambique and, yes. and I was struggling to speak because of the language. Mm. I was in a shop and then somebody asked me, uh, he realized that I'm struggling, the shopkeeper, and he quickly switched into English. Uh, how, can you, how can we help you? Yes. Uh, then we started talking. As he asked me, uh, where are you from? I said, I'm, I'm from Kenya. Then he switched to Swahili. Ah, you know, and yes. I felt at home. And we talked. He told me he, you know, he hails from Kisumu, and we talked. And I, I was actually given. I was actually told to pick what I want oh, from that show because yes. you know he felt so happy that a fellow Kenyan is with him in a foreign country. Yes, I think this is the the thing that we need. This, it's the spirit we need to embrace. We need to know that this is our win. Whoever takes it, it is the win of the entire Kenya. Okay. Amen. Amen. Allow me to conclude with this comment from Roslyn Abuga who says it's true. Those people who are seemingly triumphing in courts should be gracious and stop, and stop celebrating boastfully. So what you are saying, you must be <laughs> mindful. Yes. Of, as you celebrate, celebrate graciously. Yes. As you grieve, uh, lose grief graciously. At yes. the end of the day, it's a choice you must Absolutely. make. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, Councillor Moffat. Where can we get you uh, your handles online? Yes, I am on Twitter, Moffat Mushauri. I also have a, a Facebook page. Yes. Mushauri Therapy Hub. Okay. And then also on Facebook, more Fatu Mushauri. Sour. Thank we'll you very you much. Out. Thank you, and we look forward to more sessions, uh, Councillor Moffat. Councillor Moffat with us. I hope you've picked a thing or two, and you'll, you'll be able to share with your neighbor, your friend, your loved ones to know at the end of the day. Pain is inevitable, but suffering, it's a choice. So stop suffering, as Bishop Oginde once said.